because our interest was future technologies. The whole aim of Trescon was to build future technology events. I started uh, almost 12 years ago with the events industry working for a French company. That is when I said I could, if I come out, I could do something different and big. I, I had the experience of doing events in Middle East, Europe, to Asia. We went ahead and named it as the uh, Asia's biggest startup expo. We were like the first event in the blockchain space to be endorsed by smart Dubai government and Dubai economy at the same time. So you need to first, when you when you start off thinking of building a product, don't go behind investments. Welcome to Biz Talk. I am Danish Manzoor, and today we are going to talk about the events industry. The industry is pretty massive globally and there are some Indian players like the ones we have with us today who are taking events industry from India to the world. I have with me the CEO of Trescon Global, Mohammed Salim, and today we are going to talk about what these guys are doing at Trescon Global and what is the future of the events industry globally and in India. Welcome Salim. it's a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you, it's now, my pleasure. Talking about uh, the events industry itself, what prompted you to have your startup, right, to get into an events industry which is by and large mostly seen as a saturated industry, especially in India right now with all the big guns who have taken over that industry? So just to come to before uh, what, how I started, right, so I started uh, almost 12 years ago with the events industry working for a French company, right, uh, right joining from a sales executive. Uh, and moving up the ladder as sales manager, then general manager. And I was managing the whole Indian operations with Middle East, Africa, Europe, right? So I've been working for 11 years. And after uh, working for 11 years, I realized that, you know, uh, at one point of time, my role was very limited and it, it got boring. Then I wanted to do something exciting and something new for the uh, events industry on my own. That is when I said, OK, there is a scope for building a company that could uh, do something different in the event space. That is where I said, like, okay, now we need to start a company uh, that would provide something different, something that people have not experienced. Because there are a lot of events companies doing a lot of things, uh, everybody trying to do their own stuff. Uh, but at the end, what matters is the result or the event. So nobody focused on the result. Most of them focused on making money, quick money. Uh, you know, jumping into a topic where if one person did, did it, everybody did it, right? right? So it was all a copy-paste, copy-paste. So we wanted, I wanted to get into something which is future, right. which where future technologies is what mo was my focus because I did a lot of stuff on technology. Right. So we wanted to give people something new that was not already a copy-paste. So we wanted to develop something new for the industry. So that is when we said, okay, we need to start. So we already had a good relationship with the CIOs. So we built uh, the CIO series of events. Uh, you know, we bought all the top CIOs together. Uh, so this is what made us like say, okay, we have to start. Something. We this have to You know, what you said is pretty interesting actually. And we usually notice that people who grow up the ranks in a particular field, they acquire a certain specific skill set and a domain knowledge when you grow from an executive to the level of general manager. And then do you think the people, like you said, hit a wall at a certain point of time and they think the company isn't really going in the right direction, but I want to take it to the right direction, but the companies aren't really ready to go that way because their focus is something else. Was that when you thought, that, okay, this is it, I have hit the wall, let me start something on my own? Yes, this is exactly the reason because uh, three years before I really quit and started doing something, I started realizing like uh, I have almost hit the wall because as you said, I've, I started a sales executive, I have moved up the ladder, I worked in all departments, I managed all right from operations to sales to marketing uh, to the management level. We grew from zero to 160 employees at one point of time. And then I felt at one point of time, there's nothing more I could do staying within the company because the focus of the company was uh, you know, in kind of direction. in one direction and I wanted to do something different. That is when I said I could, if I come out, I could do something different and big. Normally there's a lot of companies that came out, like even the guys who I trained, they started their own companies, but they all looked at this events industry in a small way. Like last 12 years, I had trained almost more than 1,000 people in the industry, right? So most of them have, some of them started their own company in the, in the small way. But when I came out and I wanted to start something, I wanted to start something big. So basically an Indian company with a global outcome. Exactly. Right. Because I come with the international experience, right? So even though uh, 
I was based in India. I, I had the experience of doing events in Middle East, to Europe, to Asia. So I've done events in almost most of these continents. So it was pretty natural so, for you exactly. to sort of start a company which is into events and do it better than the existing companies that you were with. Exactly, because I, I knew the process that is involved right. in right from developing the concept to executing it the way it should be done. So it was easy for me to decide basically what I wanted to start right. and what I wanted to achieve. But in order to achieve that, I needed the, good, I needed the right team. Right. So that was the and biggest the challenge. And exactly. The and the freedom, right. of course. The freedom is the big thing because then I could do, go out, experiment, try, okay. Make a mistake. Make a mistake, right. fail, learn from it, and then do it bigger, right? right. Come back stronger. So I, I guess the failure is what makes you much stronger. And what I believe in is unless you try something, uh, you don't know if it work or not. What was your first success when you started Prescon Global? Uh, like, you know, in the, in the initial phase after the hardships, what was the first success that you tasted? See, basically, uh, when we started, uh, we started off well. Basically, we got uh, a, 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 an opportunity to do the World Startup Expo. So one of the clients from Dubai wanted to do a big startup event. Which year was that? Uh, this was in 2016. Okay, so basically, at a time when startup... We just started, right? Was, was at, 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 at the, the peak. Almost the peak. Yeah. At the peak. So right. uh, it was supposed to be a kind of smaller event. But then we said, when we started, then we started conceptualizing. We said, there is a scope for a big event, right? So then we, we, we went ahead and named it as the uh, Asia's biggest startup expo. Being a startup company, we had, we had, we had the took guts. that risk and guts yeah. to say, you know, we, we will call it the world's, yeah. sorry, the Asia's biggest startup expo when we had competitors like Web Summit doing Surge right. in India and they had already done one edition, right? So we wanted to make it bigger than that. Uh, we knew we had the capability because we had the right team, we had the uh, right marketing person. But we did had you have the resources at that point to pull something that big off? Not really, how but did, we knew how that. How did you fix that? <clears throat> no, that's what. The basically, uh, as I said before, right? In the last eleven years, I've trained more than thousand people, right? So we, ha I had trained some of the best in the industry. So I knew where to get my resources. So I, I, I dug back into my uh, books and right. said, okay, I need this people, this person for marketing, this person. The first challenge was for me to build the first layer, like the management team. Right, so I I started with building the you know hiring the right marketing head, the sales head, you know the operations head. So that is what I started with. Then we knew okay automatically we will get the team, right? And luckily we got we got the money uh, when we signed the agreement. We got the money that we had kind of funds to hire the right experienced people from the industry. So uh, it all it all like fell in place, in place at one point of time, right? So we, we knew it was a big risk that we are taking, but at the end, when we executed the event in November, it was really Asia's biggest startup expo. One. We had 300 exhibitors, right. we had 7,000 people across the world, right from US to China. We had investors, we had corporates, we had startups, we had incubators, accelerators, all across the world coming to the event. Right, so you did hit a downtime in between in your journey at that point of time. So every company, whenever they hit a downtime, right, that becomes a source of learning not just for the company but for the industry and the upcoming budding entrepreneurs as well. So what are your learnings from your time downtime when the company had previously? See, basically, uh, what we did was one of the one of the things that we did because we were doing the World Startup Expo, we focused our resources completely into World Startup Expo. We had other events running like the, our flagship events, like the CIOs, the BFSI. Uh, at some point of time, we said, okay, this is more important. And we, we, we sidelined the others. And then we were not able to make enough so revenue. And then when we, yeah. when we finished this event, right. we had to still continue making revenue, right? right? So we didn't have anything in pipeline. Then it took us like a few months to really get back into the game and put a plan for 2017 mm -hmm. and see what we had to do. And, and at the right time, we had the demonetization, right, right in November. Right. So that was the three, four months of struggling period where we had all these resources that we hired for this big event right. and we didn't have a big e event anymore, right? right? So I, I still had to keep those resources and try and build another big event, right? That is when in January, February, when we said, cash, you know, exactly. yeah. we didn't, we didn't, we didn't have the revenues flowing in like it was for the first six months, right? But we still had to keep all the resources, still pay them salaries, and, you know, manage that expenses that was coming through, of course. We went through hardships. We had to, you know, I had to reach some of my friends for some angel investments mm -hmm. uh, to keep the company afloat, right? So, but 
But what we did was we worked very hard on developing something big again, right? We, we were searching for, because our interest was future technologies. The whole aim of Trescon was to build future technology events. So then we said, okay, what is the future? What is the next technology? Then we said, okay, blockchain, right? So blockchain was one of the technologies, AI was one of the technologies that we were researching. And at the right time, uh, we had Dubai announce their blockchain strategy 2020. So now there was a gold mine there. Okay, so we launched the event in February. Uh, everything was ready by April, and then we, we launched into the market, and it was a big success, right? From May, we had the revenues flowing, we, we got the right partnership. But you know, that's a very, very interesting thing that you mentioned, that, you know, most startups, what happens, whenever they hit a downtime, it can be of, uh, due to n number of reasons, right? Here it was demonetization, the market was down, there wasn't enough money in the market, people were not spending, but then you persevered. So perseverance over here for entrepreneurs, especially young entrepreneurs, very important to downtime. Don't look at it as an uh, immediate failure or look at, okay, it's an opportunity for us to sort of stay together and then wait for the right step, right moment and plan for something bigger so that you balance it out. So that's what you're trying to say. Exactly. You need to keep calm in such situations right. and not panic. Basically, if we panicked and said, okay, now we need to cut stuff and we need to let go our resources. I, that was one of the options. So we could, I could have let go some of the staff. That's the easiest to, option for any exactly. company. Right? And to, most of the companies would do that do because that. when they see there's no money coming in, then they need to let go the staff and till they figure out what next, right? So, but I had to stay calm and say, okay, let's build it. We can do it. So we were able to build. Uh, what what we said was we will not do like other companies where they will find what other companies are doing and they will copy and paste something to do quick money. I didn't want to do something to put together an event which would make quick some revenue, but we, we, I looked long term. I launched the event for October, <laughs> even though we were having problems in February, we launched the event in October. So I saw long term and said, okay, we put it, we, I could have put it in May and tried to make some quick money, but that would be only temporary, right? So we wanted to make it big, so we put it in October. We went full-fledged and we got back in the game. Wonderful. Right? So for those of you who have just joined the broadcast, we are in conversation with the CEO of Trescon Global, an events company, an events startup rather from India, which from what I understand from my earlier conversation with Salim over here, that they are not really the, the classic startup which wants to raise funds at all times. However, they did raise some angel funding initially during their downtime. We are in conversation with Salim right now. And in case you have any questions, do comment below. We'll try to get you answers for those questions specifically regarding the events industry in India. Now, Salim, you have also started the World Blockchain Summit, right? You said that there was the right time for it and you went for it. In fact, IBT now is an exclusive media intelligence partner for it, right? And tell us more about why the Blockchain Summit? See, when we were uh, on the downtime, we researched on something that could be new, where people would be willing to spend money because our the whole revenue, revenue model works on where people can spend money. So a lot of these traditional IT events, people were not spending money. So we, we wanted to find something new. So then when we, in 2000, beginning of 2016, even though the blockchain was there for quite some time, it was still in a nascent stage. It was just picking up pace, right? Where the Bitcoin price was raising, the cryptos was trending, and uh, Dubai had announced his blockchain strategy for 2020, one of the first governments to do that. So we said, okay, this is the right time for us to put together something because we researched a lot on other blockchain events that are already in the market, right? There were small meetups, startups, uh, uh, some, some companies trying to do something small, but they didn't really understand what it takes uh, to, the do, market to make a successful yeah. event and yeah. what the market really wants, right? So we had to build an ecosystem where we could bring the investors, we could bring startups, we could bring governments and policymakers. Uh, along with corporate, so all in under one ecosystem. That was our aim, to bring everybody under one roof so everybody could benefit from each other. For example, right. an investor coming to the event, he finds the best quality blockchain startup that he could invest in, or ICOs that he could invest in. A corporate who's coming, they, ha they meet with the best solution providers who they could take Rely help on. in you know, implementing the blockchain strategy or implementation. For a startup who's coming, they would find the investors that would invest at the same time also meet with corporates who they could collaborate with. So we, we wanted to find, this experience we got by doing the World Startup Expo, right? When we did the World Startup Expo, we got this system together. So we kind of replicated that model into only the blockchain space. And when we did that, it was quite successful. And, and we, were, we were like the first event 
in the blockchain space to be endorsed by smart Dubai government and Dubai economy at the same time, even though there were a few events running. So they, they saw that we were doing something different because what we did was we, we bought a lot of international blockchain experts because there was not many in the region, right? So we had to bring blockchain experts from US, from China, from Europe, from all parts of the world. When we had a strong lineup of speakers, automatically it attracted the startups, investors. So what started like a 200 people event ended up with 700 people at the event. Now talking about the events space as an industry, how big do you think the space is at the moment and what is the opportunity there? Like how big is the market size at this point of time? Have you done a study on that? So there's different uh, opportunities that's uh, like, it's, it's predicted to be around uh, 10,000 crores by 2020. In is, India? Is in India okay. alone, right? Mm -hmm. Because there are different type of events. There's conferences, there are government events, there's entertainment, B2B, B2C, right. B2B, B2C. We are not in the B2C space. So we right. are purely focusing on B2B. So when we started, we wanted to make sure we are only B2B focused and we are uh, you know, catering the segment for the elites, only the C-level decision right. makers when, where the really business happens. We don't bring uh, general people to our events. So I believe uh, globally uh, it would be anywhere between $5 billion. Uh, it's a big in a sense, it's growing, industry. it's rapidly growing. Now, right. if you see, everybody wants to be in the events industry. Right. Because if you see two years ago or three years ago, uh, maybe events was just event management. Okay, right. So it, I would say, okay, we are into events and say, oh, you're an event management company? Mm -hmm. No, you know, we're not an event management company. We're a business uh, consulting and events firm where we do you know, mediation, we create, we bring the elites together and create business opportunities. And revenue after finish exactly. at the same time. So that's very wonderful. Now, you know, talking about uh, the event space right now, do you think it is saturated right now in the world, globally or in India? Of course it is saturated, right? So everybody wants to do their events. And right now, it's not only conference uh, producers, like uh, events companies like ourselves who's doing events now. The governments is doing their own events, like the companies like IBM's, the Oracle's, they're doing their own events. Uh, there's a lot of, even in the blockchain sphere, right? There's a lot of the blockchain companies doing their own events to get people, right? So it's saturated, but I, feel, I still feel there is a good amount of space for uh, people like us who, will, who are catering to the niche segment, right. elite, uh, where people understand what it takes really to, uh, you know, make a good event. Right. Now, talking about uh, tech in the event industry, <clears throat> Do you think there is still scope for more technology which can be brought in the event space, which will help event organizers or event consulting companies in deliver effect, delivering effective results? Mm -hmm. So where can these solutions be like? Because when you've been somebody who's worked in a company in the event space, now you have your own company as well. Where do you think technology can help you in optimizing? See, there's a lot of already uh, technologies that are available for the events industry in mm -hmm. terms of matchmaking apps. Mm -hmm. uh, we are also using some apps to, you know, uh, for our events. We have our own apps for blockchain events right. where we, uh, you know, put, uh, like we connect, even before the event, we connect people through the app mm -hmm. uh, for, uh, you know, engaging uh, for one-to-one -one interaction. They can chat within the app and, you know, uh, interact with them. Uh, so there's a lot of apps already available for the events industry to make things, it, it's not as it was 10 years ago right. when we started, right? Everything was in paper, everything we had to do manually, right. but right now there is a lot of things that could be uh, easily done in terms of marketing uh, softwares, in terms of automizing marketing campaigns, yeah. to uh, giving a better uh, interaction even before the event, even after the event. So even after people go from the event, it doesn't finish, right? We have. Uh, so on the app, they can still, even after the event, they can chat with each other. They could, you know, take a reference from the event. Right. So what we try to do is we use, we use a lot of technologies that are already there in the market mm -hmm. to make our events much more, uh, you know, technological friendly and you know, digital. Right. Yeah. Right. So digital is the future. So we try to make it as digital possible. We also uh, said we're going to go green. We're not going to print any agenda. So everything is online. So right. in all of our events, we try to be as green as possible. We don't print paper bags anymore. Uh, we don't print agendas anymore. Um, you know, when they come, all they see is go into the app. You find all the information. Wonderful. Now, since you mentioned about uh, you know uh, the, the the web thing, the web part of it, a lot of companies are doing webinars now and stuff. Now, let me ask you this: that do you think e-events, webinars, kind of stuff in the days to come in future will actually take over physical event space? See. Uh, 
even though it's, it's uh, e-webinars are good for people who are not who do not have time to fly in and uh, you know get some knowledge uh, about the industry and uh, meet in person, know, and right? Because it's it's nothing like you meeting somebody personally, right? right. So you know for a fact, uh, speaking on the phone and going and meeting somebody face to face, it makes a lot of difference. Different experience, right? right? So it's a different experience. It's a different connect that you would have because you're establishing a contact um, by face, right? So I feel we will still have a big scope for our type of events than uh, e-webinars. So because basically if you have to do business, you have to meet somebody personally and a lot of these solution providers would want to meet uh, these buyers personally. In Even person. the buyers want to understand, they will uh, still have, they will want to have touch and feel of the product sometimes. They want to really understand what they can do you right. know so it will I, I feel there is still a big market right. uh, for these type of uh, b2b events right so sarim the last question i have for you is usually we ask every guest on the show uh, because a lot of our viewers are also young entrepreneurs right who just have their startups or are still in college and thinking about getting into the startups or having their own businesses uh, ready and up and running what advice would you have for the youngsters out there about starting a new business or the people who are stuck in a salary, a salary job, but they want to do something, they have a brilliant idea and they want to excel and do something. What's your advice for that? I was in a very comfortable job, right? That paid me very well. I had a good paycheck coming. My management treated me very well. Uh, but at one point of time, I had to take the decision, right? So I was uh, doing a job for 11 years and uh, I was still uh, thinking, should I take the risk of starting something on, burning uh, my hands, uh, maybe, you know, face.